So I'm going to jump down a little bit, and Archbishop Vigano says this, simply tolerating that there are Catholics who want to drink from the sacred sources of that rite sounds like a defeat for them, one that is bearable only if it is limited to little groups of nostalgic elderly people or eccentric aesthetes. If the extraordinary form, and he puts some squ uh, scare quotes on there, but if the extraordinary form, which is such in the ordinary sense of the word, becomes the norm for thousands of families, young people, and ordinary people who consciously choose it, then it becomes a stone of scandal and must be relentlessly opposed, limited, and abolished, since there must be no counter to the Reformed liturgy, no alternative to the squalor of the conciliar rites. I'm going to pause here. Here, Archbishop Vigano is turning his sights to the modernist hierarchy. We were told, as Catholics, that 1960s was a great moment of dialogue and awakening about the positive elements in humanity. And we could all come together. All these years later, we know that that's all malarkey. That's not true. You can dialogue all you want with Hindus, and they're still going to go worship their elephant head god. And you're still going to have division, schism, heresy. I mean, here we are all these years later, and we're not even in full communion with the Eastern Orthodox. The Eastern Orthodox are not in communion with themselves. The patriarch of Moscow and Russia has excommunicated the so-called ecumenical patriarch of Constantinople. They're not in ecclesiastical communion. For them to admit that they have spent 50 years ripping apart churches, tearing out altar rails, putting in IKEA tables as altars, telling nuns, take off your veils, wear pantsuits, for them to admit it was all a big mistake. That is a bitter pill to swallow. And Archbishop Vigano taps that. Remember, Archbishop Vigano hasn't spent his whole life as Archbishop Lefebvre. He has been in the diocesan uh, conference of bishops, nuncio realm, the Novus Ordo realm, up until recently. So he knows those environments. He knows the cardinals and the archbishops and the popes. That's where he's lived. And he says, since there must be no counter to the Reformed liturgy, that's the Novus Ordo, no alternative to the squalor of the conciliar rites, just as there can be no voice of dissent or argued refutation against the mainstream narrative, and just as effective treatments cannot be adopted in the face of the side effects of an experimental injection because they would demonstrate the latter's uselessness. So ultimately, this if, if you accept that the future is trad, the future is traditionalist, you are also admitting we screwed up. Our experiment failed. And there's so many billions of dollars and so many ecclesiastical careers and so many red hats that are propped up by the so-called Vatican II new evangelization. They, can't, they just can't admit the defeat. So then Vigano says, so let us not ask ourselves why in the face of the multi multiplication of communities tied to the ancient liturgy, the flowering of vocations almost exclusively in the context of the motu proprio and the increase in the frequent reception of the sacraments and consistency of Christian life among those who follow it. There is a desire to wickedly trample an inalienable right and hinder the apostolic mass. The question is wrong and the answer would be misleading. Let us ask ourselves rather, Archbishop Vigano says, why notorious heretics and fornicators without morals 
would tolerate their errors and their deplorable way of life being placed into a question by a minority of the faithful and clergy without protectors when they have had the power to prevent it. This is a powerful point Vigano's making. Notorious heretics and fornicators without morals is how he's classifying the group that wants to persecute and take away the right, inalienable right, he says, of attending the apostolic mass, the traditional Latin mass. Archbishop Vigano then says, at this point we understand well that this aversion cannot fail to be made explicit precisely by putting an end to the motu proprio, abusing a usurped and perverted authority. Even at the time of the Protestant pseudo-Reformation, tolerance towards certain liturgical customs rooted in the people was short-lived because those devotions to the Virgin Mary, those hymns in Latin, those bells rung at the elevation, which no longer existed, necessarily had to disappear since they expressed a faith that Luther's followers had denied. And it would be absurd to hope that there could be a peaceful coexistence between the Novus Ordo and the Vetos Ordo, the Old Ordo, as well as between the Catholic Mass and the Lutheran Lord's Supper, because there's no compatibility between them. He says towards the end, the church is not an agency in which the marketing office decides to cancel old products from the catalog and propose new ones in their stead according to customer requests. I like this analogy, right? The church is not a marketing agency with a catalog. He says, imposing the liturgical revolution with force on priests and the faithful in the name of obedience to the council, stripping away from them the very soul of Christian life and replacing it with a right that the Freemason Bugnini copied from Cramner's Book of Common Prayer was already painful. That abuse, partially healed by Pope Bennett XVI with the motu proprio, cannot be repeated in any way now in the presence of elements that are all largely in favor of the liberalization of the ancient liturgy. If one really wanted to help the people of God in the crisis, the Reformed liturgy should have been abolished, which in 50 years has caused more damage than Calvinism has done, end quote. So Vigano you know, saying, look, it's not a catalog. This is not a marketing team. This is the faith. And 50 years ago, a new liturgy for all seven sacraments, a new liturgy of the hours, a new book of exorcisms, a new everything, was imposed on the clergy and on the laity. And he says it is a right of the Freemason Bugnini copied from Cramner's Book of Common Prayer. Look, I used to be an Anglican priest, an Anglican clergyman, and I said Cramner's Book of Common Prayer for the sacraments that I celebrated. And as someone who has firsthand experience with Cramner's Book of Common Prayer, I will attest. I think one of the reasons why I became a traditional Catholic is... I feel and hear Cramner's liturgy inside the Novus Ordo. The Novus Ordo is tilting the Roman rite towards Cramner, which is the Church of England's Book of Common Prayer. I'm not the first one to notice that. 